Hey, it's Brian G, the EVOG, and it's right at sunset here. So I'm just sitting in our Ocean One, taking it in, and I uh, found myself reflecting on a few things that um, are top of mind. And I'm, I know I'm not the only one, right? There's a 100% chance I'm not the only one that's been thinking about you know, the, the high profile YouTube reviews by MKBHD, Matt Watson from Car Wow, um, the, the two high profile so-called news reports from Reuters and the Wall Street Journal over the course of the last week, um, as well as, of course, the, the going concern warning and late 10K filing that have led to plummeting and extremely volatile shares of the Fisker stock price. So I wanted to uh, just share my perspective, give a little bit of context, and um, see if maybe as I process this myself, if I might be able to help other owners, investors, or enthusiasts of Fisker out there. So let's get into it. So I think the best place to start is with why, right? Simon Sinek, always start with why. So our why in terms of the Fisker Ocean starts with five things. Um, the first one is the design, the stance, the look of the Fisker Ocean. That was one of the first things that caught my attention when it came to this vehicle. The second thing, and I know this is true for many owners out there, is the Fisker story, right? And the story looks at things like the name of the vehicle, the ocean, right? It's named the ocean because of all of the recycled, reclaimed materials from the ocean that went into the interior uh, and the rest of this vehicle, right? Um, that's the first element of the story. Um, the second element of the story as I see it is the fact that it's designed and engineered in California, right? And the Fisker logo with the sun setting over the ocean with two lines representing the designer's pencil and the engineer's ruler, right? That's the second element of the Fisker story. Uh, a third element of the story is the fact that it's built in a CO2 neutral plant in Graz, Austria. A fourth element of the story is the asset light business model with an established contract manufacturer in Magna to build the vehicle, right? Fisker gets to focus on what he's really good at in terms of designing uh, a beautiful vehicle. And Magna can focus on what they do really well, which is built build high quality vehicles. Um, the, the last element of the story is really a comeback story, right? We're aware that this is uh, Fisker's second venture, right? Fisker Automotive did go bankrupt. And for me, I felt like Henrik and team would be able to take those lessons learned in their first venture, apply them here, learn from them, and have a different outcome. So that's the second part of my why. The third element is the enormous range of this vehicle, 360 EPA 
validated miles and the performance over 560 horsepower in this midsize SUV uh, just makes it such a pleasure to drive. Earlier this afternoon, I, I drove, I don't know, it had to have been almost an hour each way with my daughter to go into DC, take a look at the um, cherry blossoms and hang out at the wharf, come back. And we had California mode going in here. Um, I'm in fun mode and it's just such a pleasure to uh, drive this vehicle. Seats are super comfortable. Um, so range and performance is three, number three for us in terms of our why. And number four are the unique features of this vehicle, right? California mode, as I just mentioned, the solar roof, Hollywood mode, the digital radar on this vehicle, one of, if not the first one in North America to actually be delivered with a digital radar. Taco trays, um, again, unique to this vehicle. And it, this isn't unique, but we appreciate the fact that we have bi-directional charging. Um, when we first got our Ocean, my wife and I took a 500 plus mile each way road trip to Cape Cod from here in Maryland. And she's in school. She was able to use the passenger taco tray to place her laptop, plug it into the um, 120 outlet in the back. And the vehicle has its own Wi Fi hotspot that she was able to connect to and stay connected and powered for that entire trip to get a ton of work done, right? So that's number four, right? The features, many of which are unique within this vehicle. And the fifth element of our Y is the fact that it's not a, a Model Y, right? We wanted something that is unique and different. Um, We've been driving Tesla since 2013 before a lot of people knew what the heck it was, right? So um, this vehicle, frankly, makes me feel special, right? It's different and it's a ton of fun. So those are the elements of my why. The design, stance, look, the story the range and performance, the unique features, and the fact that it's not a Model Y, it's different. So that's the perspective from which I'm looking at this right now. And there are three, three key questions that I've been getting as you know we've been dealing with what we've been dealing with in the Fisker community. Um, the first question's, how are you feeling? And I feel fine. Um, I'm not worried. I am, as I hopefully just conveyed, I am enjoying the heck out of this Fisker Ocean. Um, I'm still getting great service. Uh, today, while we were in D.C. at the wharf, uh, they had level two charging down there. And I plugged in when we came back to the vehicle. Um, I had an issue with getting the charger unplugged. I tried the emergency release in the, in the driver's door jam. It wouldn't work. Long story short, I decided to go ahead and call Fisker support. And in less than two minutes, I had someone on the line with me. And he essentially said, look, man, try it where you're holding the handle of the charger while pulling the emergency release. And I did that and immediately it worked. So I was able to get service within two or three minutes to resolve that situation. Um, another example of great service and experience, uh, great service that's contributing to my experience is this past week, I was out of town on business, but 
my wife let me know that uh, we had received a package from Fisker and it was a pair of new mud flaps that were sent to us. So I was like, great, they're replacing those. That's awesome. And I wanted to wait until I got home to see what the installation uh, entailed. And before I could even get home, I got a text from Brandon, my service tech, who said, hey, what's your availability next week on Wednesday to have me come out and install your mud flaps? So just a, a terrific service experience is, is what um, I'm experiencing, and it just adds to the overall um, feeling I have with this such that I'm not worried. I'm enjoying this vehicle. And I guess the last element of that is the fact that, yes, I'm an investor in Fisker. I've not sold my shares. Obviously, they're, they're taking a beating. But um, I didn't invest more than I can afford to lose, right? So as much as I, I obviously care about that investment, I don't want to lose it. If that worst case scenario comes to be, comes to fruition, you know, I'll roll with those punches as they come. But I think rumors of Fisker's demise are a little bit premature. We're not there yet, right? And interestingly enough, as I was talking to my service tech on the phone, um, well, the person who answered the phone when I called about the uh, charge plug issue earlier today, um, I asked him, you know, how, how are you doing? How are you guys doing with all of the fear, uncertainty, and doubt that's out there um, and the decline volatility of, of the shares? And he said, you know what? We're focusing on what we can control and we're working hard to make sure we deliver as many cars as possible and that the customers who receive those cars have the best possible experience. So he thanked me for asking the question. We chatted a little bit more. I told him, you know, I still own, I'm still loving my vehicle. I appreciated his help. Um, I told him I was a shareholder and, and there's a lot of us out here rooting uh, for them. Uh, I did express my concern, my primary concern with Fisker, which I'll get to here in a second. Um, and he, he appreciated the positivity, right? Because as you can imagine, there's a ton of negativity out there right now. And I think, you know, if we can pause for a little bit and just reflect on, you know, the thousand plus employees uh, who get up and go to work at Fisker every day, what their lives must be like going through this, right? So, um, like I said, I'm, I'm fine. Uh, the, the stuff that I've had to deal with is, is really first world problems, right? So that's question one. How am I feeling? Hopefully that gives you a good sense. Um, the other question that I get is, what are your biggest concerns? with Fisker. And simply put, I'm concerned about the OEM partnership, right? Fisker has told us, right, we don't have enough capital to make it all the way through 2024. So they either need an investor or they need to raise funding. Um, the, the specter of raising funding uh, in this climate, macroeconomic climate, is very difficult. So, and I, I wonder what's in it for an OEM to sign that partnership agreement now, as opposed to waiting and you know trying to get the best possible price for them, right? So. That's my primary concern is, can we get that deal done? 
The second concern I've got is with the execution around sales, right? And, and as far as that's concerned, Fisker has made the strategic pivot to a dealership model. And so the, the question becomes, how successful is that going to be? Um, I know that some of those dealers have received a ton of vehicles, triple digit number of vehicles. Um, I know that some of them have sold out their inventory, right? But we really won't know the um, impact and the tangible success of that dealership model until we see Q1 numbers. And the third biggest concern is around the boardroom at Fisker, right? Henrik is CEO, his job is vision, mission, strategy. And I think we're somewhat okay there. Uh, he's not absolved of responsibility there, but I'm really concerned that Fisker hasn't brought in an experienced CFO and or chief operating officer with experience running a public company, uh, a global public company. And the fact that we are sitting here again, second quarter in a row where the 10K, 10Q um, filings are late, right? That's a self-inflicted wound that speaks to perhaps uh, Dr. Gita just having way too much on her plate, as I mentioned in the last video. Um, no public company should have one person, global public company, startup uh, in a hyper competitive environment like this uh, for EVs, should have one person wearing both COO and CFO hats. Those jobs are just too large and too complex, right? So Regardless of what happens in terms of the path forward, I think if that doesn't change, then it becomes a limited factor in terms of Fisker's ability to truly execute and execute well. So those are my concerns. The OEM partnership, the sales model um, shifting to dealers, and the need for an experienced CFO or COO, or perhaps both, uh, to really drive stellar execution, which will be required moving forward. The last question that I get, and I'll, I'll close the video with this, is about advice for others, uh, other owners, other investors, um, about Fisker. And <laughs> my number one piece of advice is enjoy your Fisker Ocean. And hopefully you're in a position to do that. Uh, it's not lost on me that there are owners out there that are um, in a different experience in terms of uh, the status of their vehicle. And hopefully that's just a small minority and that that can be addressed. But that's the first thing that I would share. Enjoy enjoy your vehicle. It's a great vehicle, as you know, as an owner, enjoy it. If you've got uh, any issues, open up a service ticket. As I said, I called the, the Fisker One number today and ha had a resolution to my issue within less than three minutes. Um, if you don't want to call the number, you can use the chat function in the app or the support at Fisker Inc. email address to automatically open up a ticket. And my experience is that I typically get a phone call within 24, no, lang no longer than 48 hours from my local service tech to uh, either schedule something or, or talk through the issue with me. So 
enjoy your Fisker Ocean. If you have an issue, open up a service ticket. The third piece of advice that I would share is don't worry about uncontrollables. Um, there's a ton of speculation out there. There's a ton of um, negativity, right? Let's worry about the things that are within our control. Uh, something I tell myself all the time, something I tell my kids, and um, I think it's, it's the right approach, right? Let's focus on the things that we can control and let the uncontrollables you know, figure themselves out. The other thing that I would say is that Fisker is not dead, at least not yet, right? And it's all hands on deck to work their way out of this. Um, we saw from the Wall Street Journal article late this week that um, they've brought in uh, some pretty heavy hitting firms to help them with the path forward to, to figure out what that's ultimately going to, uh, to be and, and to look like. So they're not dead yet. So that means the last thing I'll share is that anything can happen. So with that, what I would say is sit back, try to enjoy the ride, regardless of where it goes from here, right? If uh, the worst case scenario comes to fruition, uh, at some point, uh, there'll be an investor that comes in or someone who buys the company out or buys the assets. Uh, Magna's not going anywhere. They play a, a critical role in developing this vehicle, including the software stack. So there will be support out there. So let's not worry about that. Let's enjoy the ride and see where it goes. So hopefully you enjoyed this video, got something out of it. And um, I appreciate you listening. Uh, please like the video if you did. Share it if uh, you know of anyone that might appreciate the message. And please do subscribe. Uh, as of this morning, I think we were at about 775. So on track to hopefully get to 1,000 by tax day, April 15th. So I'll see you on the next one.